The regard Australians have for banks has never been lower, and it will soon sink even further. That's because of Catherine, a very brave woman who, through shame, feels compelled to speak out. For three decades, she worked on the front line of banking. She was a teller. At first, it was an honourable job, and she genuinely thought she was there to help the customers. But then the banks started putting profits before people, and her bosses made her do the same. The dirty tricks Catherine reveals tonight will stun you. This will sound harsh, but did you find yourself becoming a predator? To some extent, yes, you do. You get to the stage where you you see them come through the door and you think, oh, what am I going to get out of this customer? Ever since leaving school more than 30 years ago, Catherine has only known one job, working at the coalface as a teller in the Commonwealth Bank. But in these last years, it's a job that's taken an unbearable toll. Was there a moment when you just thought, this is not me, I can't do this to another customer? I think the really sad thing is when you walk down the street and customers say to you, please, do not ring me anymore. I don't need any other products. So, yeah, you, you understand the financial implications of what you're doing. It's not ethical. It's all got to do with targets, bonuses and money and greed. Catherine's story from the inside... There are more damning allegations against the banks. ..comes in the wake of appalling claims to the Royal Commission into Banking... I asked him, would he still be here when I'm 102 making my last payment? ..by victims from the other side of the counter. Explain that I'm a gambler, I have a gambling problem. I don't understand why they keep offering more, me more money. Customers who've been treated with total disdain. If we were offering a limit increase, it was because we thought that the customer might want it, then we can profit from that. For them to do that to their customers is absolutely and utterly disgusting. It makes me feel a little bit grubby. It's like we've all been tainted with this really bad taste. It, it's taken away the integrity. It's not just the bank's integrity, but it's us as individuals. It's like we've lost our innocence. You feel the shame. Hmm. And I imagine you're not the only one. No. And there's a lot of staff that just, they leave. They can't do it anymore. I know it upsets you, but does it also make you angry? It makes me angry that we've all been so... Oh, so worried about our own self-importance and our own image that we haven't stood up earlier and said, this has to stop. And I think that's why I'm here. Which bank handles most of Australia's top 100 companies? The Commonwealth Bank. Catherine began her career at a time when the banks were still a pillar of society. Which bank has the highest credit rating in the world? A place you could trust and with people who understood you and your finances. It was something that I looked forward to every day. I used to really enjoy getting up, going to work. It was a passion, I suppose. Then something happened. Probably 15 years ago, but more so in the last, say, 10 to 7 years. It became far more pushing product and all about sales, and it was no longer about the customer. It changed in that you were now seeing them as opportunities. Every customer that goes through the door, every customer that you serve, you are expected to see what products they have with you, see what gaps you can fill, give them the opportunity to get a quote on home insurance, car insurance, life insurance, um, find out where their credit cards are. You're, you're really being hammered to bring in the money. Yeah, yeah. This shift in culture from service to sales has come at a massive human cost. 
Customers who've been sold bank products they don't need or can't afford have been pushed to the edge. Hi, this is the National Debt Helpline. You're speaking with Lisa. And many, out of sheer desperation, call here. I've been getting some letters from my bank about my mortgage. To the National Debt Helpline. We, we don't really know what's happening with the finances and I've, I've, I've just been trying to pay it. But They're just ordinary people calling us who want the best for their family. They just want to put food on the table. Catherine Temple is a lawyer at the Consumer Action Law Centre in Melbourne. Each day she hears the stories of lives lived on the brink of financial ruin because of aggressive sales tactics by banks. A lot of people in a lot of distress because they're just loaded up with debt that they can't afford uh, and a lot of the time they never could afford and it's scary. Mr. Regan, you like 72-year-old pensioner Robert Regan. What's your occupation, Mr. Regan? Oh, I'm sorry? Retired. The Royal Commission heard he was given a $50,000 loan by the ANZ Bank to be repaid over 30 years, even though he had no way to pay it back. He now stands to lose his home. Have you at any time put your home on the market, I, I did Mr. have my Reed. home on the market, yes. And why did you put your home on the market? Pay off this debt. Yes. And Irene Savidas, a single mother with two kids living on benefits yes. who was sold credit card insurance she neither wanted nor needed. I just felt um, pressured or um, kind of like, you know, no matter what I said, it was the opposite. So I, I couldn't can I felt like I couldn't cancel it. The more shameful conduct, it seems, was safe for the vulnerable. Just take a moment. Who it turns out are good for business. People who are struggling to make ends meet can actually be very profitable to the banks because they are the ones who tend to pay the most in interest, uh, in late fees, in charges. So there is an incentive there, I think, to provide loans to people who are living on the edge. At the heart of this appalling behaviour is a system of incentives which has become ingrained in how most banks work. In short, the more you make for the bank, the more you make for yourself. For a teller like Catherine, that might mean between two to $3,000 in bonuses a year. For a senior executive, it might be in the millions. Either way, the pressure is on to sell or leave. It all starts at the top and it, it's the trickle down. A manager may get told, you need to have 20 home loans a week. Well, that means that if you've got five staff, those five staff need to get four home loans each for the week. And so Thursday comes around, if you haven't got them, Friday become, can become a really, really hard day. So you take on that pressure. Yeah. You, you feel that you're letting the side down by not getting that extra referral to the home loan. And then you've ruined everyone's Christmas. Yeah. And you can imagine what that does in-house. Because, yeah, there's some really ruthless stuff that will get customers to increase credit cards or do stuff on paper, they may be able to afford it, but in reality, you know that perhaps they can't. This burden to sell and the moral torment felt by staff is well known to Julia Angrisano, the head of the National Finance Sector Union. The tactics that bosses would ask their employees to use were quite despicable on some levels. Our members often felt quite uncomfortable about some of the things that they were asked to do. Um, it was not uncommon for our members to tell us that their managers would expect them to peer over the counter and have a look inside the customer's uh, wallet as they'd open up, um, to have a look whether or not perhaps that customer had a credit card um, from one of its competitors. And in terms of your members, how serious is this stress that they feel, this anxiety they go to work with? We have many, many instances of members who tell us that um, they are so stressed before they go to work that they have to psych themselves up and they're in the cars crying, knowing what's about to happen when they walk through the door. It was that work setting that pushed Catherine to the edge. 
Working in that environment, I imagine, you, you'll either sink or swim. Well... There's, there's no in-between. No, there's no in-between. So did you start to sink? Yeah, definitely sinking. I mean, things like anxiety, um, depression, sick days, migraines. And those sorts of things you'll find are across the board in most banks. You'll find a lot of staff out there that don't cope. Is there any one thing that stays in your mind that you wished you'd never done? I, not so much that I'd never done, but I really wish that I had the guts to stand up earlier. So this is a standard deed of release that would be applicable um, across the entire finance sector. But the banking industry has a special way of shutting down staff. There's a non-disparagement provision. It's called a deed of non-disparagement, a document many employees must sign when they leave. So you're not allowed to say anything critical about your past employer? No. For how long? Really, for life. That, that deed continues forever. You can't say a bad word about the banks for life. Mm. Mm. You'd be the only one in the community. That's right. And, I th and our view certainly about those deeds is that it's just another form of control. We control you when you worked for us and now we're going to control you once you even leave us. Coming up, when you see that the former CEO of the Commonwealth Bank, for example, with $12 million, how do you feel about that? I feel sick. Should the bank bosses give back their bonuses? I can't understand why someone can't say, I've hurt so many people, I can't take this salary. That's next on 60 Minutes. The Royal Commission into Banking resumes tomorrow. And it's likely there'll be more horror stories. The banks make you feel that anything's possible and then all of a sudden they pull the rug from under your feet after they have gained all that money. Adding to those we've already heard. Have you been shocked? Uh, yes, I have, I have been shocked. Uh, I can't believe that it, that kind of thing was happening in my day. And I think the banking community should be ashamed. John Dalson knows the world of banking and business like few others. He served on the board of the ANZ Bank for 15 years and has been chairman of blue chip companies such as Woolworths and the Herald and Weekly Times. I think the people at the coalface in these banks are very decent, hardworking, good people. And what troubles me is they have known what's been going wrong and they've been very frustrated about it. And I think in the current environment, the staff and the banks are the meat in the sandwich. It's interesting, whilst on the outside we're angry, it seems also on the inside of the bank there is great anger and in fact the morale you would say is appalling. It is. I should be careful about just, just saying the problem is down at the coalface. It actually runs right through the banks to the senior people and a lot of them, some of them have spoken to me and they are, appall they are very sad and very concerned about the morale within the bank. They are, they are terrible places to work. But nothing has provoked more anger than senior bankers' take-home pay. Operating income growth was up 4% on an underlying basis. Ian Nareb, the former CEO of the Commonwealth Bank, was paid close to $9 million in 2016, more than half in bonuses. And when he left the bank in April this year, he cashed in $12 million worth of shares. I couldn't do it. I think, it's, I think it's shocking. I can't see how an individual can head up an organisation like that with so many things get wrong. Forget the remuneration stuff, forget all that. I can't understand why someone can't say, I've hurt so many people, uh, I can't take this salary. When you look at your boss's salaries, when you see that the former CEO of the Commonwealth Bank, for example, Ian Narev, went home with $12 million, how do you feel about that? I feel sick. People have suffered, and people are still suffering financially, because of the outcome of what they have been told is so good for them.
And when you see that the bonuses that are given to the senior executives of banks comes without too much justification, but then someone like you gets hauled over the coals at the end of every week for not having hit your targets, uh, that must uh, irritate at the very least. Uh, to say that it sucks is probably an understatement. For many, this culture of greed and abuse exposed within our banks has been hard to stomach. And now a very unhappy public wants to see real punishment. You know that people do want to see people pay. They want to see people of go course. to jail. Is that, is that just revenge? No, it, I, I, no, I don't think it is. What they're saying is um, that these people have done something profoundly wrong. And there's a lot of people going, going to jail for way less offences. And we need something like that to happen for people to get the message. It's not just a question of paying the fine and moving on or getting a slap on the wrist, but there are serious consequences. That 18-year-old girl who walked into the bank all those years ago never anticipated this. No, I thought I'd have a job that I would always be proud of. For Catherine, an employee for so many years, the world of banking has left her exhausted and all out of love. A woman who gave her life to a career in an industry that has left her feeling as angry and as disillusioned as her customers. So somebody looking at a career in banking? Don't go there. If you want your sanity, don't go there. If you've got pride, if you're an ethical person with integrity, don't go there. That's terrible. <laughs> That's so damning. What's the truth? 